one of the more notable games that took place last night between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, one of the reasons why recency bias is, is very real in sports is because we are blessed to be able to see so many of these athletes perform at their highest levels night in and night out. And I think the era in sports that we're in, we're, we're starting to see this on a more consistent basis, on a more daily basis, where athletes, men, women, they are putting up historically great numbers, performances. And normally, we, we get so enamored by these recent performances that we develop this recency bias. We believe that the last performance or moment that we saw was one of the most incredible moments, one of the greatest moments that we've seen from that sport. That's kind of how this recency bias develops. And that's one of the reasons why when we look at championships and why championships are so coveted is because of the respect that those athletes get. And in particular, the fact that you're beloved, the fact that you're celebrated, the fact that you're acknowledged and respected eternally for what, you're, for what you are accomplished and what you have accomplished, it, it, it has a lasting effect that can sometimes look past and jump over that recency bias that may exist. So typically, when you are an NBA champion, you are given the benefit of the doubt the following season across multiple categories. That's what we see. And yet somehow, despite the fact that last year when the Milwaukee Bucks won the NBA title and Giannis was named Finals MVP, we've forgotten about him this year. We've completely disregarded Giannis Antetokounmpo this year throughout MVP talks. This is a guy who is a two-time league MVP, a defensive player of the year, and the reigning finals MVP, and we forgot about him. We simply haven't included him in the MVP discussion for the longest time. And for me, this is one of the problems that we've had with the NBA's regular season MVP is you have purists who sometimes try to harken back to previous performances to justify voting for guys this year. And you've got other media experts out there who vote for players that are having the best particular season which is what the award is about. But oftentimes when a player's previous results and previous performances match the type of production that they're having the following season, you normally give that athlete more of a benefit of the doubt. We haven't been giving Giannis that benefit of the doubt all season. And yet throughout this entire year, the leading candidate for league MVP has fluctuated. It's been kind of cyclical, very fluid. It's it's a constantly changing target. First couple months of the year, Steph and KD. Then it was Jokic. Then it was Embiid. Then it was DeMar DeRozan and John ja Moran and Devin Booker most recently getting into the fold. And yet Giannis has always kind of been hovering in this conversation, but we've never really given him the shine and the light that he's deserved for the type of season that he's been having because somehow he's been overshadowed by other players. And last night was a great reminder of why it's impossible to jump to those types of conclusions earlier on in the season and why when you have an athlete who's been so productive the previous seasons and especially last year, and you're seeing the same production this year, how he's gone under the radar baffles me. Because last night, the Milwaukee Bucks – outlasted the revamped 76ers on the road in Philadelphia, 118 to 116, and Bede, Harden, their team entirely intact, Tobias Harris, entirely healthy, against the Milwaukee Bucks. It's 
defending NBA champs coming on the road. And they won by two, and it was all decided by game-winning block by Giannis Antetokounmpo. Hmm. Have we ever seen a Giannis block in a clutch spot before? Oh, yeah, game four of the NBA Finals against the Phoenix Suns, where he literally switched out to help defend Devin Booker a step inside the arc and then recovered in time to block an alley-oop pass from Booker to DeAndre Aiden at the rim. He covered about 15 feet of ground in a second and a half to deny Aiden the block, to deny Aiden the alley-oop, and to seal that game for victory. And so, obviously, he ended up sealing the NBA Finals with that 50-point performance, five blocks in that game as well. So right now, it's been pretty much a two, I think it's it's come down to a two-man race for league MVP. You've got Jokic and you've got Giannis. I think that last night essentially eliminated Joel Embiid. It's not like he didn't play well. He played well, 29 points, 14 rebounds, 7 assists, but you're playing alongside James Harden, which diminishes your chances. And who, who by the way, still dropped 32 points and nine assists for you. So he played pretty well. The problem is the 76ers have had ample opportunities recently with Joel Embiid to make statements at home. And they haven't been able to do it. They lost to CP3 and Devin Booker and the Suns a couple days ago. They lost to Nikola Jokic at home. Uh, at home. They lost to KD and Kyrie at home. Now they lost to Giannis and the Bucks at home. So I think that Joel Embiid, is kind of out of it. And when you look at Jokic and when you look at him and Giannis, Jokic is obviously having a fantastic season. 26 points, 13 and a half rebounds, eight assists, 57 and a half percent shooting from the floor, best PER in the league. And he's only missed seven games and the Nuggets are two and se- are two and five without him. He's obviously playing without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., Hasn't been a part of the team for long stretches, and I just received a notification that he's been experiencing further setbacks with his recovery. So so you certainly have to give Jokic a ton of credit. On the flip side, Giannis is averaging a tick under 30 points, 11.5 rebounds, 6 assists, also over 55% shooting from the floor, and he's missed 11 games. His team is 5-6. and without him. So both of those guys are extremely invaluable. They're extremely valuable, and they also are invaluable because you can't play without them for their respective teams. And you look at their records, and they're pretty similar. The Nuggets are 45 and 31, sixth in the Western Conference. The Bucks are 47 and 28, second in the East, just a half a game back of the Miami Heat for first. So Again, I'd say in the top five, if you want to group it to five, I'd have Jokic, Giannis, Embiid, and then probably John Morant and Devin Booker, although you could flip it. And Luka Doncic is right on the outskirts as well, making a compelling case. He's obviously having a sensational season, leading Dallas to the fourth spot all by his lonesome. I think Devin Booker, who's obviously come on strong as of late, is starting to send a message to the league, hey, I've improved as a leader, I've grown as a leader, and and the last stretch of basketball over the past month, without CP3, obviously he just came back, but prior to his return, we were starting to see the, the maturity and the growth and the development of Devin Booker and how he is starting to reshape his image and become a winning basketball player. But I think he came on too late for him to really knock off Jokic or Giannis, I just mentioned, and Bede, I think, was knocked out of it last night. And John Morant, listen, I don't know how this narrative has started to swirl around the last couple days that just because the the Memphis Grizzlies are 18-2 and without him, that all of a sudden John Morant shouldn't be an MVP candidate. I've been hearing all these conversations. I don't even know why these were topics discussed on a show. If anything, yes, you should highlight – how good of a team Memphis is. But if anyone's trying to make the case that because the Memphis Grizzlies are winning games now, 
in the regular season without John Morant, that they could do anything, that they could advance anywhere in the postseason without John Morant is, I think, the ultimate sign that this guy is invaluable. Because if you don't believe your team, who's 18-2 and two without a guy in the regular season, can win a playoff game at all with, without that player in the postseason, then, then what are we really saying? And I, I'm, it's been appalling to me how so many people want to discredit what John Moran is doing. Just because he's not the leading candidate for league MVP doesn't mean he shouldn't be a top five MVP candidate or that he's even an MVP candidate altogether because he is. He absolutely is. But with that being said, he's missed too many games for one to justify that this particular season he should be the front runner for MVP. So. Overall, do I I mean I thought that last night's performance by Giannis, did it catapult him over Nikola Jokic? No, I wouldn't say it catapulted him over him, but I definitely think it pulled him just about even, maybe 51% Jokic, 49% Giannis. I think it's it's been dwindled down to those two guys. If you're a fan of some old classical movies, I always make the reference to Alfalfa, and I would say that Jokic is alfalfa is leading Alfalfa by a hair, which is how Alfalfa won that final race. A little kind of hair sticking out by an inch. That that's pretty much the margin that I give him over Giannis right now. But both of them proving to be absolutely invaluable, invaluable to their teams.